Welcome back to the fifth video in this short series on AEC applications and workflows with SimSolid. In the previous video, we performed an analysis on uh, the steel connection. We were able to observe some of the results, and now we're going to look at some additional features that we can use to perhaps represent a more realistic uh, model. I just want to draw our attention back to the connections that we looked at before. Uh, I'm going to just display the connections and remind ourselves that for this plate, for example, here, we have these red uh, dots that are indicating a bonded connection between those two plates that are mated together. So they are totally bonded. If one pushes, the other gets pushed. If one pulls, the other one gets pulled uh, and pulled back. That may not necessarily be the real world conditions, though. So we may want to represent a um, separating connection in this type of application. So what I can do is I can simply just left click on these two plates. I'm going to hold down control so I can click both. And in here we have the option to review the part contact conditions. And you can see here, when I do that, it brings up a dialog that shows me the two parts that I'm looking at and the connection that we're also evaluating. So it's connection 529 and it says the parts are currently bonded together. I'm going to click on the edit button. And we have the option here to specify a different type of uh, connection. So I might want to look at a contact condition here that is separating uh, rather than bonded, meaning that if these two parts are pulled together, that surface that uh, the two are coming into contact with will not be preventing any uh, tension between those two parts. So they won't be resisting that. Obviously the bolts will still be there to resist the tension, but the plates themselves uh, will not be bonded together. I can specify a friction coefficient. I'm just going to stick with the defaults and then I'm going to click OK. And when I do that, you can see that the color of this uh, contact conditions here changes to green, indicating the presence of a uh, separating connection. So I'm going to close this now. And when I make this change, I am able to perform a nonlinear analysis. But before I do that, I also want to change the setup uh, for my structural analysis. So I click on the edit option here and make sure that I'm accounting for the separating contact. So I'll click OK. You'll notice that my result is now drawn in red, indicating that it's no longer up to date with the latest settings that I've made. And I can rerun the analysis. So I'll click Solve to perform the analysis again. This is all in real time. We're performing a nonlinear separating contact analysis. And this time around, if I look at the info that's uh, it took a little bit longer, seven seconds rather than five seconds, but it is again looking at uh, a more complex model. And I think what might be most apparent here is if we just look at the displacement diagrams, here I can look at the magnitude of displacement. I'll turn off these. Uh, displacement uh, indicators here. I just want to look at the actual displacement shape. So I'll start the animation here and I just want to zoom in on this area and we can clearly see that these two parts are coming apart from one another, at least at the corners. Uh, and it's an exaggerated display, but we can observe this a little bit more clearly. And then what I might be interested in next is looking at more details related to this contact area. So we have this contact response tool where I can left click on this tool and maybe just I'll position this so I can see a little bit more clearly. Here I'm looking at the normal traction, but what might be most interesting to me right now is the opening. So I can see where the openings are occurring and the actual magnitude of opening. We're getting less than 0.3 millimeters. So perhaps there is a target that you want to achieve for your, um, your the amount of opening that you want to allow to prevent fatigue issues or something like that, uh, you can certainly use this as a way to evaluate that opening uh, result. I'm going to click close here and I do also want to draw our attention to the bolt forces again because naturally we would expect that would change and so now if I sort the axial forces at the head of the bolts we can see that the magnitude of the forces has definitely changed. Uh, so here I can see that uh, the maximum is about 1 times 10 to the 5 newtons, whereas before it was uh, significantly smaller. And I'm just going to zoom into one of those uh, maximums here. 
And if I just zoom out so I can see the whole thing, not surprisingly, we're getting quite a bit of force in the bolts that are right next to the opening area. So this would help us evaluate that and really represent the more realistic uh, condition for our structure. Uh, these bolts are going to be doing the bulk of the heavy lifting when it prevents, uh, when it comes to preventing tension uh, in these two plates here. And I could always apply uh, additional bolt tightening forces or pretension to those bolts uh, to look at reductions in that opening and evaluate that um, in all within SimSolid here. We have these additional tools uh, for bolt tightening and nut tightening and so on. So if that's something you want to explore, I would encourage you to check out the help system on that topic and you'll be able to find a lot more information.